Long ago, the humans of Earth were visited by an aggressive, warlike civilization known as the Kree of Hala. Many of humanity's tribal ancestors named these beings Blue Angels in the stories they passed down through the generations. Although Earth was too primitive to be of much consideration to advanced galactic powers, this particular Kree faction found value in using humans for their scientific experiments in the hopes of developing a powerful biological weapon they might use against their enemies. Their efforts to manipulate human DNA resulted in the creation of a subrace with unique abilities who came to be known as Inhumans. These genes would remain dormant inside host bodies until exposed to Terrigen mist, which emanated from Terrigen crystals also created by the Kree and stored inside devices known as Diviners. The Kree then captured a Mayan hunter-gatherer and transformed him into the Inhuman Alveus, also known as the Hive, a powerful creature able to manipulate the minds of other Inhumans and possess the bodies of dead humans. Originally, the aliens intended for Alveus to lead their Inhuman army, but their plans were scrapped when the Kree government learned of their illegal experiments and shut the project down. Alveus then betrayed his masters and led an inhuman rebellion against them, ultimately banishing their creators from Earth. However, Alveus became so powerful that his own followers came to fear him, seeing a human-inhuman alliance turn against their former leader, sending him through a device known as the Monolith, a teleporter created by the Kree which exiled Alveus to the planet Maveth. Yet not all were prepared to abandon the man who freed Earth from the Kree, and so a cult formed with the intention of bringing Alveus back to rule the world. This secret society would go by many names and were represented by various symbols over the centuries, but were revealed to the world as Hydra, with a symbol modeled after the appearance of their exiled leader. Though their initial efforts did not succeed in returning Alveus to Earth, Hydra cultists would pass down their beliefs through the generations, with the leadership of the organization meeting together every few years to hold a lottery where one of them would be selected as a sacrifice to be sent through the monolith to serve their leader on the other side. Although many faithful Hydra worshippers were transported away, none had ever returned. In the early 20th century, an ambitious member of the ancient cult named Johann Schmidt joined the Nazi government of Adolf Hitler and rose to prominence, eventually taking over the Special Weapons Division and creating his own research program he named Hydra. The success and unrelenting grand ambition of Hydra's new leader caused the ancient secret society to pivot from their original purpose of returning the Hive to Earth towards a more authoritarian and militaristic organization, using global politics and advanced technologies to eliminate their enemies and conquer the world. Although this led to less emphasis on the worship of their deity, the more religious members of the Hydra leadership went along with the new direction in the hopes of presenting the Hive with a united and subjugated world to lead upon his eventual return. Johann Schmidt went on to experiment with a super soldier serum created by Abraham Erskine, but his impatience led to him ingesting the liquid before it was ready giving him the desired superhuman strength and speed, but also disfiguring his face and turning his skin red. Abraham Erskine, who was being held against his will, was then rescued by the Allies and began working for them, later perfecting the serum and using it to turn Steve Rogers into Captain America. Red Skull, as he became known, continued with his ambitions for global domination, focusing his attention on finding an ancient artifact known as the Tesseract, locating it in Norway and attempting to weaponize the technology with the help of Hydra scientists Arnim Zola, but his work was disrupted and destroyed by Captain America and the Howling Commandos as they eliminated Hydra facilities across Europe. Arnim Zola would be arrested for his illegal medical experiments, while Red Skull would disappear during the final confrontation with Captain America aboard the Valkyrie when he attempted to hold the powerful Tesseract in his hand which unknowingly activated a portal, transporting him across the galaxy. Realizing that the Valkyrie was on its way to launch a devastating attack against the United States, Captain America chose to sacrifice himself, crashing the plane off the coast of Greenland, and was presumed dead. Yet even with Red Skull and Hydra's main facilities gone, the ancient society continued to operate in the shadows, once again rising to prominence under Arnim Zola, former ally of Red Skull, who was freed from prison during Operation Paperclip when former Nazi scientists were brought in to work for the American government. Under the Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistics Division, or SHIELD, Arnim Zola and other former Hydra operatives rebuilt the organization, staying true to the goals of Red Skull by seeking global domination through political 
political and military manipulation, yet altering the mission slightly by remaining a secret organization within S.H.I.E.L.D., using their resources and government connections to slowly destabilize the world so they might rise to power in the chaos created. For years, HYDRA thrived, covertly ordering assassinations, revolutions, and the fomentation of war throughout the world. They also continued to focus on the study of advanced and alien technologies, able to find Captain America's best friend, Bucky Barnes, who was believed to have perished during a mission in Europe years earlier, and treated his injuries while also brainwashing him so he might serve their cause as an expert assassin. They also then kept him cryogenically frozen when he was not on active duty, so he could be utilized many times throughout the decades without aging to any significant degree. Among the many crimes committed by the Winter Soldier was the assassination of American President John F. Kennedy, as well as the murder of Howard Stark and his wife. In 1972, Arnim Zola, the man who restored Hydra, was diagnosed with a terminal illness and died. But his consciousness survived, transferred into an advanced supercomputer where he would continue to serve Hydra for decades more. The organization soon became so powerful, they infiltrated foreign governments and international corporations and institutions, even attempting another super soldier program called the Centipede Project, which saw Hydra agent John Garrett experimenting with this technology as a means of building an army and restoring his own deteriorating health. In 2012, during the Battle of New York, which saw the Avengers defend Earth from an alien invasion, S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Phil Coulson was killed. However, only a short time later, he returned to active duty, seemingly alive and well. John Garrett then took a special interest in Coulson and this new S.H.I.E.L.D. technology, believing it was a means to perfect his own super soldier serum. However, HYDRA's long-term plans were interrupted in April of 2014, when Captain America and Black Widow discovered the supercomputer, which housed the consciousness of Arnim Zola and learned that Hydra had continued to exist after the fall of Red Skull, infiltrating S.H.I.E.L.D. Having been discovered, Alexander Pierce, one of Hydra's highest-ranking infiltrators, attempted to hurry along the plans for Project Insight by launching three satellite-linked S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarriers into the air, programmed to eliminate Hydra's enemies by killing 20 million people around the world. However, Captain America and those still loyal to S.H.I.E.L.D. were able to stop their plans from being realized, killing Alexander Pierce and destroying the helicarriers. And while mass devastation was avoided, the war between HYDRA and S.H.I.E.L.D. continued on, with HYDRA agents all over the world now activated and told to kill their former S.H.I.E.L.D. colleagues and secure their locations in what came to be known as the HYDRA Uprising. Meanwhile, as Phil Coulson and the remnants of S.H.I.E.L.D. fought a civil war within their organization, Wolfgang von Strucker, HYDRA's leader in Europe, continued his own work behind the scenes, unconcerned with the failures of past plans, as he continued to study the power of Loki's scepter, using it to experiment on humans. And while most died, twins Pietro and Wanda Maximoff survived and were left with unique and powerful abilities such as super speed and telekinesis. In America, Daniel Whitehall, longtime Hydra agent having served under Red Skull during the Second World War, had been released from prison by Alexander Pierce before his death, citing a medical dispensation due to Whitehall's old age. But in truth, Hydra wished him returned to continue his research into a device of alien origin known as the obelisk and its connection to Inhumans. Whitehall led the American branch of the organization for a time, but was eventually killed by Phil Coulson, who had also defeated John Garrett and the Hydra faction within S.H.I.E.L.D. However, Whitehall and later S.H.I.E.L.D.'s investigation into the obelisk led to the discovery that it was actually a diviner, built by the Kree thousands of years earlier and left behind after their experiments were shut down. Inside the diviner were Terrigen crystals, which emit a mist that can activate in human genes. This then led to the discovery that in humans with incredible powers had existed in the world for many years, hidden away to ensure they could live their lives in peace without fear of persecution. With the fall of Whitehall and his organization, Hydra suffered a major setback, made worse when Wolfgang von Strucker was captured by the Avengers, defeating the last Red Skull-style leader of the organization. With the militaristic and more science-based faction of Hydra gone, the old leadership re-emerged, with the religiously motivated families of the ancient cult returning to prominence. One such leader was Gideon Malik, a man descended from a long line of Hydra cultists, who even participated in the centuries-old sacrificial lottery to determine who would enter the monolith and join the hive on the other side. Malik then joined forces with Hydra agent Grant Ward, who led a team through the monolith with the intention of at long last returning the hive to Earth. Yet Phil Coulson and his team learned of their plans and followed them through the portal. Coulson then managed to kill Grant Ward, but in doing so, allowed the Hive to enter Grant Ward's body and use it to travel through the portal, finally returning home. 
and while the remnants of Hydra were eager to join their savior who had at last returned to them, they soon learned that the Hive was only interested in making the world better for Inhumans, and so began to ignore Hydra operations in favor of developing technology to create more Inhumans as quickly as possible. As a result, S.H.I.E.L.D. in conjunction with the U.S. military were able to track down and eliminate the last of Hydra's global facilities and arrest or kill its members. Only three of Hydra's leadership managed to escape the attack, joining the Hive as he finalized his plans for world domination. As a reward for their faith in him and the role their families played in keeping the cult of Hydra alive for so many years, the Hive presented them with a serum he promised would make them inhuman, so they might join his revolution and live as gods in his new world order. However, the formula had not been perfected and killed all three participants almost instantly. S.H.I.E.L.D. then closed in on the Hive and used their own inhuman allies to defeat him with an inhuman by the name of Lincoln Campbell, trapping him aboard a Quinjet and piloting the ship into space, sacrificing himself to ensure the creature's death. Although Hydra was now utterly defeated, with even the families that founded and carried on its legacy destroyed, the threat they once posed faded, and new enemies emerged for S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Avengers to confront. But the influence and significance of Hydra continued to be felt throughout the world, with many of its former agents forever remaining faithful to the fallen organization, such as Vasily Karpov, a retired Hydra scientist who was captured and tortured by Helmut Zemo for information, but refused to cooperate, instead reaffirming his loyalty with his final words, Hail Hydra. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Sir Rice of the Dreadfort, Red Priest Nemo, the Flame of the Seas, Mistwalker, Transcender of Fates, Tall Maester Damien, the Drunk Librarian, and Red Priest Malium, the Kindled. You all make these videos possible, and I am eternally grateful for your support. If you would like to help Civilization X and gain early access to videos, access to the Patreon-only series Heroes of Lore and Legend, and vote on future content to be produced, you can click on the Patreon link in the description box below and pledge any amount you'd like on a monthly basis. Or if you'd prefer to make a single donation, you can use the PayPal link also in the description below. And please be sure to like and subscribe and click on the links to see more.